Hey. Bye. Oh, praise God. Spicy legs. Spicy legs, baby. Okay, wait. Why are you sharing <laughs> pie pies? Are you sharing with the group? What's happening? <laughs> Spicy? <laughs> That's just wrong. Wrong. I usually can't get it, honey. Someone had to wait in line. Today is Tuesday. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Hi, Olivia. Royce, you don't want your kids. Where's Royce at? Royce, you want to say hello? She can't see you. Oh, wait. Sorry, his name is, what's your name again? Thundercat. Now it's Thundercat. Sorry. Come on, Thundercat. <laughs> Come on, Thundercat. Come on, Thundercat. Jump. One, two, three, jump. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Hi, Thundercat. <laughs> and this morning it was bubbles. Oh, okay. All right. And then what else? Was it? I don't know. Thundercat. Yeah. <laughs> Go have your peaches, please. Please, someone here. Thundercat meets barking dog. Oh, voice. He's back to his peaches. Let's. Woo! <laughs> All right. Hello, everyone. Hi, Davia. Good afternoon, everybody. Hi, Ellen. We're going to get started. Let's see what time is it. We'll give everybody two more minutes. Two more minutes. Good morning. Afternoon. Hello. more minutes everybody well, I wish we were in person instead you guys get to see my kitchen today because Elijah and I are in the process of making cinnamon rolls oh so what I wish you all were here to be enjoying them they're about to go in the oven we can uh, do a drive-by yeah, I'll tell you my address. <laughs> <laughs> you can't show that good stuff and not plan on sharing. Right. I'm telling you, right? Ooh, maybe I'll bring some Friday. Oh, that's no fair. I won't be there. Well, Me either. I need to come pick Friday. it up. Can I have a special? <laughs> yep. Oh, yeah. Almost. Oh, Did you see me catch? No, she didn't say that to me. <laughs> What's Friday? COVID testing? Oh. Yes. At 50 I'm working really hard at not being here also. <laughs> I'll be in Texas, so I just, you know. Wow. Why Texas? 
So all my family is there, and I haven't been all year. So I have to get out. Yeah, you deserve that. Daddy, you need deserve it too. I mean, we all do, but Lord have mercy. All right. I'm just trying to get one day. <laughs> like this one might extend it from Friday to Monday, Tuesday. That's oh. Friday. Okay. Let's see. I found out the secret. You cannot plan it. And you, if you plan it, you can't tell anyone. You just have to wake up in that morning, look, and see what can I you know what can I expense and and just do it because between the zooms and the budget and the right. and the, all, all the stuff you cannot plan it I've been like two weeks trying to get three or four days straight and it ain't gonna happen let alone one day but I only got yeah to one yeah day. we all know you took a few days and just didn't tell us that's, yes, that's what I'm trying to tell you. You can't tell anybody that you're planning it because then they send you the meeting invite that says, oh, <laughs> I gotta be there. Yeah, but it's a meeting. It's a Zoom meeting. You'll be out in the middle of the, uh, in the, middle of the forest talking about, I don't have no signal. <laughs> <laughs> just do it. <laughs> like Nike said, just do it. Don't tell nobody. Just take it off today. Uh, oh my goodness. All right. Let's see what's happening. All right. Let's get started. We're going to start off with introductions. If you don't know, you're in the Oh My Community Collaborative Meeting, where we meet now on a weekly basis to talk about our issues and our troubles. Not our personal ones, but our issues and our troubles. <laughs> Community <laughs> issues, right? Um, and they just won't stop because if they would stop, we would go back to the month, the monthly meeting. <laughs> All right, we're gonna start off. Well, my name is Delia Fitzpatrick. I am at our our kids first, um, and we're gonna start off with introductions with Monica. Hi, I'm Monica. I'm from Ridge Lane Neighbors. It's a neighborhood group putting together a linear park, making good progress. Very good. Nice to see you. All right, Helen, state your name, where you're from. Uh, this is Helen from San Francisco Public Library, the Ocean Food Branch. Good to see you all. Nice to see you. We have Jackie. Hi everyone, uh, Jackie from Stonetown Family YMCA um, here on behalf of Teresa DiDios. Welcome. Um, Scott Falcone. Hi everyone, uh, Scott, I'm an affordable housing development consultant and a neighbor. Very good, nice to see you. Uh, Alita. Hi everyone, Alita Fisher, um, president of the District 11 Democratic Club and um, member of CASE, the Community Alliance for Special Education. Nice to see you. She'll be delivering cinnamon rolls later this afternoon. Put, in, put your address in the chat. <laughs> right. Oh, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Uh, Renard? Uh, Renard Monroe, executive director of Youth First. Nice to see you. Let's see, Mary Evelyn Thomas, are you ready with your Popeyes? Are you delivering Popeyes? I don't yeah. think she can go back, but here we go. <laughs> Mary Evelyn Thomas, our special place, early educators of San Francisco. Yes, yes, very good. She has Popeyes for lunch. Mary and, and Renard, Oh, I'm gonna need your help with some things, so I'm, I'm gonna have to call you. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, Mary Harris. Mary Harris, all my neighbors in action. Very good. Uh, Felicia Thibodeau. Good afternoon, Felicia Thibodeau, Executive Director of Southwest Community Corporation at IT Bookman. And Delia, can I vote to put on the agenda the retreat that we do at the end? 
you know, we usually have a retreat. Let's call it the not a damn Zoom retreat. Retreat. <laughs> retreat usually in February. What I name? know she's trying to change the name. Not a damn one. <laughs> not, not a damn Zoom retreat. Retreat. <laughs> We're going to have to get fr fancy this year, right? All right. I, w I wrote that down. Thank you. All right. Uh, Patty? Patty Clement with Catholic Charities. Very good. Brandon? Also Wyatt. a member of CASE, but a different case. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Brandon Wiley? Uh, Brandon Wiley, OMI uh, Family Resource Center, uh, YMCA. All right. So, Sophia, thank you, Brandon. Hi, everyone. Sophia Vivanka Iragi from Youth Art Exchange Program Manager. Very good. Nice, nice to see your name. <laughs> Darlene? Darlene? Um... All right, Monica, Chinchil, Chinchilla, Chinchilla. Chinchillin. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, everybody. Happy Tuesday. Sorry for the delay. It's been juggling back and forth with everything. One second. All right. Okay. Okay, so thank you all for your time. Um, updates today. Uh, Monica Chinchilla from Supervisor Safai's office. Oh, updates the the board um, passed their proposed spending plan and um, I will share that list with you um, with you all we received about 500 K in terms of um, district allocations so that's about half of what we usually receive and not close to the 1.4 of requests that we received just in cuts alone not in new programming but just in cuts alone mm -hmm. so we had to make some very hard choices and decisions and there are, there's no, there's no winner. We're all, what we all lost in kind of this scheme just because of, you know, what we're able to restore and whatnot. Um, so I'll, I'll share that district wide list with you all. But in addition, we were able to find, you know, as a citywide collective for funds for an API violence prevention fund, we were able to um, get some dollars for um, a culturally competent COVID resource and services hub as well as um, dollars to support, you know, mental health citywide for the Filipino community. And so we, we, we kind of, we, we won a little bit and then, you know, we all lost a lot, but um, we're, we're, yeah, it is what it is. So I'll share that. But that's currently right now, it's a month now of negotiations with the mayor's office and um, the budget should be signed October 1st. And so once the, the budget is signed, then, you know, then these funds can, you know, start going out. Um, in addition to that, you know, we've been, first thank you to just everyone in the OMI, CC, and all those who have been the partners at the COVID testing site each week. It has definitely been the model for DPH about how community comes together, how community leads its efforts and does it in such a, you know, positive way. And so we sing you praises and DPH even sings you guys praises every week. So thank you all for everyone who's been there. Um, we, we are also in conversations with DPH about a permanent site within D11 because the data calls for it. And they want to do a five day a week testing site, similar to what they have in, um, in Soma and in um, the Barcadero, having a site set up in the south, you know, southern part of the neighborhood, you know, in D11, that could be that hub for, um, you know, all our southern neighborhoods. And so we are currently in conversations and um, negotiations with that, um, just so that we can continue to have this resource for our community for the next few months. And it would be five days a week. And so that timeline is pending but we're trying to get it up as quickly as possible. Um, in addition to that, oh, community hubs. Ooh, everybody here, community hubs. <laughs> <laughs> I know you all are saints and it's been, you know, we're all trying to build a plane while flying it. And I just had a conversation with Shireen um, or Shireen or Sharice earlier today, just about kind of progress that's been made in the OMI. 
um, versus two weeks ago. And so it looks like there's some pro a lot a lot more progress than was the dire situation a couple weeks ago. And so they are solidifying a bunch of sites. And I know many of you are involved in that. And thank you, Delia, for, you know, being an anchor and working with an org. I hope they're not just falsely sharing information, but <laughs> I know we're on the right path. <laughs> but we want to make sure that we have, you know, the proper amount of sites to serve our community. And so from the conversation today, sounds like we're in the right direction, but we still have a ways to go. We're still um, waiting but, for my list. That's all. Just waiting for my yeah. list. <laughs> yes, yes. Get that list, baby. Get that list. <laughs> And so, which is, it's a, it's a lot, the situation is a lot better here on the OMI than the Excelsior. We are pushing for a lot more orgs and spaces in Excelsior. And so, yeah, that's, that's kind of now for us, like we were solidifying things in the OMI, but it's good compared to what it was. And now I have to shift and make sure the Excelsior has capacity and supports as well. So that's, that's happening. That's opening up in the next couple of weeks, September 14th. And, um, yeah, I think budget part is COVID. That uh, food? About, yeah, everything for now. Food, yes, food. Okay, so we did get a um, an investment of $80,000 from the SF Food Market to go to help um, provide, just, and this is just the initiating funds for a food program uh, within our district. Because I know many of our sites, they have to pull from different you know, places to get food. And, you know, we need to have our own source. And so 40000 of that is going to be allocated to the OMI, which will be handled, operated by Miss Felicia at IT Bookman. She's been handling, holding it down. And so we'll get her the list of, it's basically shop to order. She can get 250 boxes each week. And we're going to partnership with you all to make sure that our most families in need can get access to those boxes. But this is supposed to be just an initial investment. We are fiercely fighting and advocating for more dollars from HSA to go into the OMI community because the need calls it and the data calls in. And so um, that's currently in the works. The initial 40,000 is there, but more is to be coming hopefully soon. And yeah, that's about it for me for today on a Tuesday, but if there are any questions or anything, feel free to. Patty, you have a question? More of a comment. So, Monica, I sat in on one of the calls last Friday for the DPH, and because I was at my computer, I could actually see them put the calendar up. It would really be nice if the OMI got credit for being this wonderful testing site, because they have us listed as outer mission. So I re emailed them and asked them if they would rename us appropriately. Huh. And I haven't heard, but on their calendar on Fridays, it says 50 broad, but it says outer mission. And I really think we deserve the credit for all the work these guys have been doing to bust their tails. Every yeah. Friday. Yeah. And I apologize. That. I didn't catch that. Not your that. fault. But no, no, it's okay. The you might have more weight than I do on this one. Oh, no, no. The community carries a lot of weight. And this meeting, to be honest, it was, they had it before. It was going to be structured to be D10, D11 focused. And they had that the week before, They're like, okay, invite the partners. But then the meeting on Friday it was everyone and it was just about masking and it was, it was, it was not what uh, beneficial, not beneficial, but whatever. So I, I will definitely share that, Patty. And I apologize about that. I didn't catch that. But if I did, I would have, you know, stomped as well and made made a bunch of noise like, yo, we got to respect our communities. But I will make sure that doesn't happen again. Also, I don't want to, I don't want to beat a dead horse, uh, Monica. But you brought up the fact that you talked with Sharice Dorsey today. And, I can't uh, hear you, Renard. Okay. I can hear him. Okay. Uh, <laughs> we all, can, we all are here. We 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 can't hear you. I can hear his soft, soothing voice. You know, it's true. <laughs> Okay. I know you talked with Sharice Dorsey about, you know, uh, the Community Learning Hubs, our new name, but my question and my statement uh, all in one is, how are we moving in the right direction? Um, you said we're moving in the right direction. Um, what direction are we moving in? Because yesterday um, on our DCYF call that we have every Monday and Thursday for two to three hours, um, it just left everyone 
like up in arms on what to do mm. forward. Should we uh, should we keep planning to have the, the community learning hubs? That was how we ended the mm. Oh, Lord Jesus. Okay. So they might be, yeah, they might be misrepresenting to me. And so that's why I, I, I take mean, it with a salt their yeah. side, but yeah. Patty was on that call. Delia was on that, on that Zoom call yesterday. Um, I'm sure that they can speak to that as well. It shouldn't just come from me, but I'm trying to figure out how are we moving in the right direction? Because, um, you know, the health department came out with new protocol as far as we were supposed to be able to serve 20 kids per pod um two sets of 10 and now we got an update saying now you can only serve 14 mm -hmm. um, so that was that was a, a new wrinkle right and then they're questioning if they should even have the community learning hubs open all day like they originally said oh lord or mm -hmm. they have shorter hours or less days uh, we can only have two staff. All of these things were brought up yesterday. Wow. Okay. And just open ended. They said, well, we may have an answer by Thursday. So I stopped uh, and I had my staff stop reaching out to families and getting, because there's no reason to reach out to the families. And I told Ms. Edwards this yesterday, the principal of Sheridan, like, we should wait to see because now it's everything has really been frozen. So I'm trying yeah. to. How, how are they saying we're moving in the right direction? Yesterday was a total U-turn. Okay, so that's that's something, yeah, that was not shared with me, and I appreciate you 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 stating that because it's not the message or things that they were communicating because from when we have checked in, it's like, oh, from last, the last time DCIF was on, last time we had the conversation, there was only one secured site, and now we're up to six. But then, yeah, if you're talking one to- secure Charter, site for- for our as a as a community hub well we always were delia was always supposed to be an anchor um as well as myself many and lovey ward so we always started with three that i knew of they were this is what i'm saying it, it keeps it's all is going back and forth yeah just, who's who's the one that was saying oh is that shireen saying like oh we we don't know or we have to get back to you Sharice dorsey and she said she was up all this weekend. She couldn't sleep. These are verbatim. Am I right, Delia? Yeah. Yes. She doesn't know which way we're which what we're doing. You know, I need feedback from all of you. Mm -hmm. We actually took an hour and fifteen minutes yesterday with just questions and concerns and statements. And then I just direct message Delia like, "This is crazy." Yeah, that's that's not how they should be. Go ahead. That that yeah, I'll, I'll talk to Maria Sue about that. But um, I don't. Yeah, in terms of yeah, shifting days and limiting hours and only yeah, reducing the number. There's no, money. There's no money to finance this. So if you move someone, let's. I just I just want to speak, and I'm and let's just go to the 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 the. the you know, the Microsoft for dummies part. You have a part-time part -time worker, right? Working four hours a day or five hours a day. They're not eligible unless you want to pay them for benefits, right? Immediately when you move someone to eight hours a day, they are a full-time employee and you must provide benefits, okay? So if you're not giving any more money, how do you fund that part? Just, just alone, how do you fund that part? Okay, so if you have two employees per 14, that's two full-time employees. They do not, according to yesterday, they don't even want us to have a floater, right? To help, they don't even want, they want that, they want you to stagger their lunches and say, come on, that's just not feasible. She said to all of us on the call yesterday, she was up all weekend trying to find a way for this to work, and she just doesn't see how it's going to work, and she needed our feedback. That took. So was this call? Was this call just? I know because they had before did it everybody, but was this call just focused on OMI? No, no. This, this is our. It was. This it is was everybody. All oh, all providers for the CLH. Okay. And it's all DCYF funded programs. I had people reaching out to me saying hey i don't want to be anchor anymore i just rather collaborate with you like you can't collaborate with anybody it's only two staff it's yeah. only two staff 
per pod. Like, yeah. you're not, there's no collaborating unless you're just going to have somebody come run a program in your building. But we already, we were supposed to reach out to a certain amount of kids. Now yeah. it's not down to 14. So we're not going to be even serving the you know, serving any kids that we thought we were going to Yeah. Serve. Let me see if we can get Maurice on a call again, like but, this but week, just to. That was my point. That's my point, Monica. See, mm -hmm. I see you guys go back. I, I know we record these messages. Remember what I said to Maria Sue on the call. This is the issue. She's yeah. not on the Monday and Thursday meetings, right? Yeah. So she's getting mess. She's getting her information from you, from Sharice Dorsey. I mm -hmm. just had a call with Sharice Dorsey. Maria Sue and Dina Edwards. We had a four person. It's changing every day. So there's no way that we can move in the right direction. So yeah. at that, I'm saying like, wow, we just we just took 10 steps backwards yesterday. I, mm. I mean, Delia, do you agree or not agree? I don't even know how to communicate. <laughs> I don't know how to communicate with anybody, right? Because it the, it's changed and I don't mm. even well, it kind of feels like we're starting all over again. I mean, I've been on these calls for the last month and I'm new to this, but yeah, we started out with 20 kids. We were told we had to collaborate with at least two other organizations. And now it's 12 kids or, or 14, can't be sure, which is really the, mm -hmm. what the, mm -hmm. they want us to do. And this whole idea is, are we gonna be open part days, half days? whole days. I, I just, I feel like we're starting over again and yet we're supposed to open in less than two weeks. Yeah. Yeah. And they're coming out, they're doing all these, you know, I had the tech people come yesterday to check out the internet service. I got the food program coming out to certify the site again. Um, like they're moving forward with, to put everything in place, but put everything in place for what? Because we don't know what we're supposed to be doing. Yeah. Yeah enrolled not one child yet because there's no reason to have them register if they're not even going to have a place to go yeah that's just and you know even when you're talking with maria sue like it's getting back to me and that's fine like my concern seems to be my concerns you know what i mean it's only renard's concerns like nobody it's like, oh, renard said it no come on now if i'm having an issue with staff the staffing model you mm -hmm. gotta be having an issue with staffing model. Mm -hmm. well, don't stop hiding behind me. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, Maria Sue, I was just on a personal Zoom with it. It was only four of us, and it didn't turn out to be three. So I read between the lines. You know, I'm sitting here listening, and it's like, well, Renard, Renard. No, it's not me. It's not me. I'm well, just saying what everybody else is is thinking. But yeah, you gotta be honest when you're making that call, Monica. Like, this isn't just Renard. It's oh yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Yeah, it would be like our community providers. Yeah. Brown. It's bigger than yeah. you guys see New Jack City. It's bigger than me. Okay. I'm not CMB. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what? No, it, no. I would never throw you out like that. No, it's more. We I think it's I think it's interesting. Like yesterday was the, the two o'clock meeting, but they also had a ten o'clock meeting to discuss this. And I was just like, what is this ten o'clock meeting about? And literally Sharice got slammed. Like they went full on about the miscommunication mm -hmm. and um, I, what are we doing and how are we doing it and and, and then then they want to they wanted to gloss over and and let's do a breakout session on this and one of the at really at the beginning the guy from um, Beacon was like we cannot open Hatter uh, Edward Hatter was really upset too. Mm. He called me yesterday and I've never met him other than Zoom. Like he searched down my number and he was, <laughs> he was going off for like 30 minutes. Yeah. Like yeah. I need you're the only one that will stand up. And I'm like, listen, Ed, <laughs> listen, listen, Ed, I got your back, but you know, let's pull in some other people because we're yeah, not, collectively. Right. Yeah. Right, right, right now, you talking about Edward from the Nave? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm hot <laughs> right now. I told him I got to back up a little bit, Wiley. I got to back up. I said, man, Ed, I'm ha I'm hot out here. They're <laughs> you know, I need I need some other people. He like he like they about to make me lose my mind in here. I said, <laughs> so, so Monica, I don't know what the solution would be at this point, but I think the truth is um is is golden. 
Yeah. That's, yeah. That's, I, I don't, not, yeah. That's not how they're communicating that everything is peachy keen with all of this. this no, whole but just it's even the fact that meeting. how they're communicating things to you is just terrible. And, and that's then I, the, I that's even the, like in the chat, like, Sharice, if we're supposed to be doing anything, I don't even have a list. I, I'm only hearing from the why that I'm approved. So it, ha it has to do better. They have to, they have to do better. And they have sec these secret meetings yep. that, that are happening. Like they, and the secret meetings, they're involving people that come right out of the meeting and text me what they were talking about. <laughs> and it's confusing me even, even more. I'm like, this is too much. It's just too much. I think it's a it's a huge challenge because they set you up for one plan, then they shift it, and the, the people who are caught in the middle, the worst part is all the kids and their families. Yep. We can't tell them anything because we don't know because they keep changing it, and then it makes us as providers look bad. And yet, and I get that they don't know what they're doing fully. I'm working with Marin County, same thing. Marin doesn't know anything better than San Francisco County. And But at some point, you've got to decide and move forward with it. You can't keep changing it and expect every provider in town to change it also then right. with last minute notice because you've got to get staff on board and all of that. And then they were saying, let's just, I think, and I think this was the last comment, Delia, uh, where they were like, well, let's just push back the start date. That like, and um, let's go back to the original model after school. And yeah, I oh, like, yeah, that they want to do after school. And then I brought up the point, like that was when I brought up that point. Well, how do you do after school when the reason we were doing the CLH in the first place was to make sure that the kids who do not have access to internet have service? Right. You can't have them come after the school. So that means they missed class all day. Right. Right. So that defeats the purpose of them having come in after school. And then they were like, well, maybe we should do it three days a week. From nine to two, ah, nine to three, right? So, so all of these, it's all of these things. All of these things are up in the air. It's just, it's just frustrating, man. It's frustrating. Monica, you're muted. <laughs> I said, okay, I hear there was you. Some, there was some cuss words in there. I know it. <laughs> no, it was more like, I'm sorry. This totally sucks, and I hear you, and. <laughs> I will, I, I'll, I'm going to talk to you just about the communication. I don't know. Yeah. So let me see what I can do. I don't know what I can do, but I can just address the whole point about this communication has been BS and it's terrible and you need to fix that. So yeah, let me, let me see. Monica, if we could just get a, maybe just some clarification, right? Or what are the community hubs set for the OMI? Mm -hmm. Who's running them and what else do we need? Yeah. Right now, like Delia sharing that she's not on the list or doesn't know she's on the list, like that's a big deal. So then well, how do we advocate for youth first? Yeah. Or how do we advocate for our kids first and make sure that they're getting the support if we don't know who is yeah. leading it, right? Yeah. Well, even um, like so the whole structure, because I know what they're saying, like we're on the list, but then now they're changing the structure. So everyone, no one knows nothing. So I'm, I'm going to, it's, they're just, they're, they've been and terrible. If we, so I, yeah, for me, I'm like, wait, what do I, what am I fighting for? What do I advocate for? What do I, where do I put my effort? You mm -hmm. know, my time. Um, is it with Renata? If there's, so, if or is it with Dillian? If she, what do I, like, what's confirmed? Yeah. Right? yeah. What can I get behind to assure that they get the resources? That, if we stand in the middle of the street, they will pay attention. No, I'm kidding. You're changing things so quickly. That they that they're making mistakes in the changes. I mean, they told us at Catholic Charities we were a hub, but they named us a different hub, and we're in, down in the Soma district. But it's like they're not even getting names correct and stuff, and then they're not sending the list to the people so they know what kids to even contact. And yet, mm -hmm. all of this falls on the providers. And so, at some point, they just need to put a line in the sand and say, "This is where we're stepping. This is what it's going to be," and let everybody move forward. And I think. For the most part, at least some of the people I've talked to in some of the breakout sessions, and some of us, we're just moving forward with like the 14, or some people are thinking two of 10 or something. Because if you have space for 20, these kids need service, bottom line. And you can't just say, well, we've decided not only 12, so you can only serve 12. Mm -hmm. What happens to all these other kids who get nothing? Right? Yeah. 
It's not yeah. okay. Yeah. It's not okay, but I mean, even with the list, so I got my list and now it's, I don't know, it was encrypted and now my list is like blocked to me. <laughs> it's getting crazy only because that's what I'm saying. I, it's it's just too much, man. And so I go back on my list and I need to talk and this is for you, Jackie. So some of the kids that were assigned to Stonestown, why I have to talk with Teresa are youth first kids. So I explained that to, um, to Maria Sue and, and there's a couple kids that you guys just don't even have the staff. No, no disrespect. You guys don't have the, the staff to deal with. There's two kids that have been with me since they were six years old. Right. And they're at risk kids and they only kind of gravitate to people who are that they know, like they'll cause problems. Like Miss Edwards, like she was the one brought it to my attention because I couldn't even unlock my list and she had the list. And she mm. was like, no, I have to have those kids with Renard because of these issues right here. So Maria, when they were assigning kids, they didn't even look at the kids that were in programming already. Mm. Right. So they were just sending kids by different. And I'll give you a perfect example. If you think it's, it's not a game, like my daughter was assigned to South of market. Mm. South of market. Yeah. My, my daughter. And he's not alone. Other people have their kids assigned to different places. It was crazy. Yeah. Yeah. My daughter was assigned to South of Market pro program. And I'm sitting there like, hmm, interesting, right? So then one of my employees, Jackie, uh, Manuel, his son was assigned to somewhere in the Bayview. Like, you said this was a community hub where they can walk down the street to go. Yeah. <laughs> but you got them going to the Bayview. Yeah. So there's been a lot of mistakes that's been made. You know, and I sent Sharice an email this weekend, still haven't been responded to, and I'll forward it to you guys. Yeah, like, please do. Can you, can you release my list back to me so I can make the changes and I need the codes for the kids so I can, you know, get them registered? She never responded. She never, she never even said, okay, I got it. Uh -huh. you no, know, I'll get to it. No message because the kids have a, a code. When you yeah. do the application, there's a code assigned to it. You can't start the app application without the code. That's the first thing on there. The first page is put in the code. Yeah. I'll have to echo with uh, what Reynard has been saying. Um, I don't personally have a list just because I'm not uh, the director running a specific site, but that person had shared with me and we have kids from everywhere. Um, so yeah, mm -hmm. it, I which is, yeah, which is not what they had said. Like we would be committed to serving kids in the neighborhood. So mm -hmm. that's a problem already. Kids that won't make it to Stonestown, and that's the, yeah, that's, and that's what I'm. That's the whole thing. Like so, yeah, we're doing this, and then why would you take kids out of a program that they've been in for all these years, right? And put and, them in a program somewhere else when there's a program on the other side of town, two and two yeah. blocks away from their house. You see what I mean? So mm -hmm. the things that they've done. Um, hasn't made any sense. No, it hasn't made any sense. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. All right. Hot so, I listened to the Board of Education and I said a few things. What's the lady's name? It's supposed to be helping us. It knows she put us, had a great presentation for the Board of Education. Oh, great yeah. presentation. She knew everything she was doing. She had everything for, all lined up. And but now she doesn't know it. She even knew the changes that were happening. <laughs> so what happened? It it disappeared. And we need to back all the program because it's just not one person complaining. The community is complaining. Yeah. This is not safe. This is not good. This is not fair for the families, children, or programs. Yeah, no, definitely agree. Thank you, Mary. Well, thank you all. Thank you all for sharing. I wow, I I did not know the level of frustration and turmoil they were causing. And so I'm going to reach out to Maria, reach out to them and see what we can do the next couple of days. Um, just to make sure they honor their commitment. And so yeah, I, I will definitely bring bringing you all in in terms of like what what we need to do or how can we fix this. So I will, I will work on it. Oh my gosh, I will work on it. And we got to move fast. Thank so, you. Is there any way she can come to the meetings? Because that's the problem. 
yeah, that's what I'm going to recommend. I'm going to literally text her right now. And this is, this is a big part of the issue is that if she's not at these meetings, she should listen in and not tell everybody else she's listening in. Yeah. Oh, so the Mondays and Thursday calls. She should. Well, yeah. When is the Thursday call? When, so it's tomorrow? No, tomorrow. 2.30 to 4.30. Okay. If you all want to afford being invited as well. <laughs> go. That can be arranged. That can be I will arranged. go. I will all go. Right. Thank all you. right, my queens, everyone. Thank you so much. There's so much work to be done. But yeah, we're, we, we, we got to do it. And thank you all for sticking through this whole mess with DCYF. And we'll see. We'll see how we can, you know, make sure they're being held accountable. Okay. Don't forget to send us the list. Send me the yeah. list. I'll send it to you guys you, right now. Can you uh, confirm or the CBL meeting? Is it happening? Not what time? Uh, for this Wednesday, I cannot confirm yet. It should be, it should be tomorrow at 2 p.m. Yeah, I just got to. I gotta figure that out. I apologize about that, everybody. It's been crazy with budget and everything. So I gotta figure out for sure if we will have that and then who will be attending. But I will email you shortly by the end of the day. Okay. All right, thank All right you. everybody. Thank you. Have a great day. Tell Suha I said thank you. She helped us with a really tough IEP meeting yesterday. So Okay. I will. He's talking to Maria Sue. Use Delia and Patty's name. I'm not gonna use nobody. I don't use nobody's <laughs> names. I That's say fine, use it. our community. <laughs> I'll just say my name. <laughs> say Laura Padilla, and, and Jackie, and, and Teresa. Aida. <laughs> oh, shit, yeah. Mary Harris. Come on, bring it all in. Yeah. No, I never. I never call individuals out. I just say. I already got a call. Why are you staring up shit? <laughs> <laughs> all right, y'all. Talk soon. All right. Okay. Um, hold on. Um, thank you, Monica. Thank you. Um, before we start sharing, Scott Falcone, I need you to uh, do your, oops, I don't want to do your, let's see. Scott Falcone, can you share with us? Absolutely. Um, I'd be happy to. Thank you. Um, so I, I just want to recognize um, all the really heavy stuff that the group has been working on and talking about, you know, especially the last six months, but of course for longer. Um, and I just wanted to be cognizant of that and, and didn't want to just kind of zoom bomb in here with some good news <laughs> and, and kind of take away from all of those conversations. But um, Gail has been nice enough to, to fit me in today, just to let folks know that, that so I'm, I'm working on two very important affordable housing developments in the neighborhood uh, the Balboa Reservoir is the one that I've most recently talked to folks about over the last three months. Um, and this has been a great forum, you know, to virtually talk to folks about it um, since we don't have any in-person meetings that we had been having previously. But and so I just want to let people know that the Board of Supervisors passed the proposal uh, for 1,100 units and a community center and a child care center and a new neighborhood park and, and all of those community benefits that are gonna be happening on the Balboa Reservoir. And, and the most exciting thing to me is half of those 1100 units are affordable units uh, for families and also for um, city college educators and uh, USD, SFUSD teachers. So um, it's, it's an amazing thing. It's you know, something that, that people in the city started talking about 40 years ago and it just never mm -hmm. got this far to an approval. So, it's a watershed moment. I just, you know, I've I've been in touch with some people on this on uh, this Zoom call, you know, separately, and but I just wanted to come and thank folks for for you know kind of asking questions and and letting me connect with with y'all and and also to say that both this and the the other affordable housing development I'm working on at the Balboa Park BART station, which is 130 units uh, for families, 100% um, affordable. Um, those two properties are, are going to be built and co-built by Mission Housing, and that, that's how I came to, to work on these projects. And uh, Mission Housing has intentions of, of and, and is doing so now, working closely with the OMI community, uh, not just on the lease up, which is going to be super important. And I think Monica dropped off, but uh, Supervisor Safi's office has been really instrumental helping to get a, a, a priority for for uh, District 11 um, that will be up to 40% of the units will be, will have a preference for, for District 11 
um, residents. So that's fantastic. And, and nice. we're gonna try, yeah, we're going to try to exceed that. And there are ways that you can do that with direct marketing and breakout groups and just, you know, essentially good communication and, and uh, working with people to scrub their credit reports and just get all the documentation, you know, in ahead because it has to be a lottery, but there is this preference. And then it just, um, you know, there's a better chance of people leasing up these units if, if they've got all their documentation in a row and we can help folks do that. So we certainly intend on doing that, you know, closer to when these, these uh, buildings are going to be finished construction. But there's also a great opportunity, especially at the Balboa Reservoir, to work on uh, job creation and internships with local community-based organizations. So, you know, we've, we've done so with City College already, and there's a model that Mission Housing has uh, for uh, people who are interested in affordable housing development. But we want to go beyond kind of construction jobs. Um, we want to work with people on you know, getting ready for these childcare um, jobs that, that will be associated with the childcare space at the reservoir. Mm -hmm. There's also tons of, you know, accounting and asset management jobs. There's social services, there's social justice and community outreach jobs. I mean, a lot of these things are a part of these affordable housing developments and, and we want to build a pipeline and who better to build a pipeline for, for those jobs than, than folks in the OMI and, and other, um, you know, neighboring communities. So, um, those conversations are happening. If you want to follow up with me directly um, uh, to be a part of those conversations or, you know, set up um, any, any way that would help start those conversations and start, um, you know, building towards what our intentions are, you know, please let me know. Um, and uh, so, yeah, just I wanted to say that our work is not done and this is an exciting housing opportunity and an exciting community benefit um, opportunity as well. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any questions for? Yeah. Yes. So Scott, I went to a housing thing not too long ago. Actually, it was over a year ago. But I know some population groups really have the, the market cornered as far as when you open up applications and they can like just blanket it. Is there a way to do it more localized where they just don't like put it all online so everybody can just throw in all their stuff. Can you do something more neighborhood based with the rules in San Francisco? So it got really was open longer to the residents or you, people had to come out here to get an application. I don't know. I don't want to yeah. make it not possible for people, but I know some people have it so, you know, wired that the minute it opens, they send out this mass email to everybody and their entire group emails in applications. Yes, I mean that that is exactly the dance Patty we cannot be exclusive I mean these are public benefits right open to everyone who will qualify but you're right there are certain organizations who've worked with community members to really kind of you know dial in exactly what you're talking about and so you know and that's their prerogative of course but it does mean that it's not a level playing field so the types of connections I'm talking about trying to make within the OMI and, and you know, District 11 more generally is to work with community-based organizations who have people who are interested in accessing this housing, but when they've gone through the, the city um, access, you know, website, Dahlia it's called, before, um, they've, you know, ended up with, with a really low number or they've gotten kicked out because their, um, their applications had not been pre-vetted uh, as, as some other folks' applications are. So we want to engage people, uh, you know, beyond the the forty percent preference um, to to be able to do that. But and and then the forty percent preference is supposed to speak to exactly what you're talking about, which is you know let's get local, let's have neighborhoods um, within the the reservoir. In this case, it's actually within a mile of the reservoir. We expanded that to capture more of District uh, Eleven, um, since the property's technically in District Seven. So that these are the these those are the kind of the fundamental things that are in place to um, to to allow a, a preference um, for District 11 residents, but that doesn't mean that um, that would suffice without more engagement um, directly with with people. And and the best way to do that is through community-based organizations. So yes, I mean that's that's exactly what we want to do, and that's what we intend to do. And Mission Housing has done that within the Mission District on um, two properties that they're working on right now, really close to 16th Street um, at the BART station. 
And so we have the same intention to do this for the Balboa BART station property and for the affordable housing developments uh, that are a part of the reservoir, those 550 units. I think it would be a great opportunity with the partnership with um, the hub and IT Bookman and um, inner city youth. Felicia, do you have a comment to pivot? Do I you do. I was just, um, is this regarding the, I was pulled in, I believe last Thursday or Friday evening at the last minute for a meeting with Mission Neighborhood, with Mission Housing Development Corporation. And is this the same project where they're now doing outreach to try to reach the OMI? Yeah, like that's right. The, the postdoc, because everything else about how the property looks, the colors and, and how it reflects the community has already passed us. But now they're talking about like in two years, there's going to be housing. And are they responsible for the community outreach? Yeah, so so a couple of different things. Um, yeah, so we've we've been working with Gwen uh, to have initial conversations about exactly what we're talking about. Um, job creation, internship, pipeline programs, and outreach specifically uh, uh, for the housing. And Mission Housing has uh, an existing relationship with, with YCD and with inner city youth. So Mission Housing is building on that. And so Felicia, that's probably the meeting that you were talking about. Um, there's a there's a monthly meeting that has been set up. I think it's the second Thursday now. But the 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 meetings that Mission Housing has had with Gwen over the last month has been more ad hoc um, and not just part of that regular meeting. But that the regular meeting is set up so that we're constantly working towards these goals. And and then also, I mean, I know that there's been some some changes in staff at IT Bookman, but we did work with Kristen originally when we were first doing like community engagement. Um, outreach for the upper yard for the one at the BART station about three years ago. Um, and, and so we already have an existing connection with your organization and of course would love to, to build on that too. Um, so that's, that's uh, there are two different properties and, and very different timelines and very different properties, but, but the same housing opportunities at both of them and then slightly different job creation opportunities at both of them, but yes, mission housing is taking the lead on making sure that we're working on all these things that we're talking about and and that we should be doing and uh, and and I'm I'm an, I'm a consultant to Mission Housing and I'm also a neighbor so I'm that's why I'm here talking about this. Thank you. So yeah, with, with these units, um, Mr. Falcone, the units that are being designated there, I've worked alongside with Saha before, Satellite Affordable Homes. And yes. Usually in those those units, they have, you know, units allotted to women who have been battered or in domestic violence, DV units, uh, domestic violence, or um, single family homes, some, you know, people with single families. Um, how will it be designated at, for this project? Yeah, so um, for the, the Balboa BART station property, it's uh, affordable housing for families. And there is not, you're right, there sometimes will be like a set aside, a certain subset of units for uh, a particular population, um, you know, either coming out of homelessness or, or as you say, you know, women who've been battered or single, single moms with kids trying to get out of a bad situation. Um, the, some are with developmental disabilities. I mean, just these kind of carve outs. But at the, at the BART station, um, there, it's, it's straight up 130 units uh, for families, there there it will be transfers from Sunnydale um, from the the Hope SF project in Sunnydale. There are 39 units set aside for those families who will be coming over and, and getting permanent housing um, at the BART station. Um, yeah, that, that, that's my point. I think that's going to be really important to uh, for people to know, especially people who you have advocating uh, for the property, to know exactly how many units were going to be available. Yes. As to to someone's point they just made, uh, Patty's point, I know for a fact, like, there are certain organizations that the city makes or, you know, they make allotments with a certain group to say, well, this is the people who are going to get priority first, um, even though there's, you know, stipulations around that, because there's a lot of nonprofits who say, oh, could we have 10 families? And then people get eliminated from these properties because 
um, they go by family size as well. So if you've got a three unit, a Absolutely. three bedroom, and you got six children, then you're eliminated, right? Or you don't know, you can't, you can't get into a two bedroom. So understanding all of those things and setting up a committee to for people to have that uh, knowledge is going to be very important. I yeah. know, I know for a fact, like looking at some of the properties for Saha and trying to help families get in, a lot of people were eliminated. And like you said, there were, and Patty's, uh, those applications were intense, right? There are so many levels to it. You know, yep. your credit history, your rental history, and all these steps you had to go through. But, you know, you miss a deadline. I think it's like two weeks. You got to have your application in between this time and that time. If you miss the deadline, you're eliminated. You have, it has to be stamped by a certain time. Like getting that <laughs> out, out to the right. public is going to be very important. Yeah. Uh, I'm, Renat, I couldn't agree with you more. So, yep. I, I have one final thing. What about the commercial space? You know how usually when they build affordable housing, they allow so many commercial spaces to um, kind of be used for nonprofits, community, be for a really reduction in rent. What about that process to determine who's going to go into those units? Is Has that already happened? Um, Partially yes and partially no. So, and it's a great question. So we technically have um, five commercial spaces um, at the upper yard um, that are all on the ground floor below the 130 affordable housing units. Um, the YMCA and Jackie, I, I'm not sure you know about this, but we've certainly worked closely with um, with with Laura uh, on this. Is and and Marissa is kind of the you know the regional manager. Um, the YMCA is already slated to uh, be the child care provider um, on the ground floor. Uh, I forget how many kids, but it's something like 35 uh, to 40 will be served there um, by the YMCA. And, um, and Mission Housing has an existing relationship with the YMCA. It's been, you know, very... It will be a preschool. It's a preschool that is slotted. That's right. Oh, hi, Laura. Yeah. I didn't hi, realize. Hi, sorry. Yeah, so that, it's a preschool that's, that's slotted, yeah, and that was um, something that came out about four years ago now at the very, very start of this, um, as um, First Vibe wanted to assure that they had another location. Um, so with city money, preschool for all has slated to bring in a preschool, and that's all the logistics on that is still getting worked out. Uh, okay. And again, Marissa, yes, Marissa Cohen is the lead on that. Yeah, um, and then there's another, what we're calling community commercial space um, that will provide uh, public access and also to the new residents for uh, services uh, that will that will help folks in you know with the things that they need help on whether it's um, health advocacy or employment training or referrals to child care those sorts of things um, and we're working with Instituto de Familiar uh, on that um, and, and that is at no cost, uh, and as is the, the Y space is also at no cost because these organizations provide amazing um, benefits to not only our tenants, but to the neighborhood. And then there are three smaller commercial spaces along the corner, um, right adjacent to the BART station. And one will be a kind of a bike share uh, and, and bike um, uh, kind of repair shop, essentially. Um, that will not only provide those services, but also help develop youth skills in, in training for those jobs. And, uh, and the adjacency to the BART station and a bike share pod that's gonna be there is you know, clearly beneficial in that way. And then we have two, and, and that will be also very, very reduced rent um, because of the community benefit that provides. And then there are two small um, com commercial spaces uh, that are just open for smaller neighborhood businesses that especially in the time of COVID, I can't, you know, imagine anyone's really going to get excited about plunking down some money to build out a space right now. But, um, you know, construction will start in February and it's a two year period. So hopefully by then, uh, between now and then we'll be working with small businesses in the neighborhood who want to, who want to relocate or, or a new business uh, where this would be a good opportunity for them. Will the district um, 11 businesses get priority? Um, I don't know. Uh, that's a little bit out of my league. I just know a lot more about the housing, but okay. I, I can I can certainly research that and ask the right people and come back to you about that. I'm just curious. Yeah, of course. No, it's a great question. That's certainly our intention. I mean, we just 
we figure that that a business owner who knows the neighborhood well is going to be best suited for that opportunity and is also probably going to be the, the small business that is more willing to take the risk because they know about um, you know the demand for their services or goods within the neighborhood because they're from the neighborhood but uh, but it's still a good question to find out okay all right Gwen and I want to um, speak to whoever the person are. We have an idea for one of those commercial spaces. Great. Well, yeah, so Felicia, why don't we, I mean, there, there's no reason why these conversations with Gwen or just with Gwen, and in fact, I mean, that's probably why uh, you, you got looped in to the last one. So I think the idea is that this is kind of a, um, a regular conversation that will be expanded to um, anyone from a community or based organization who has an interest in, in working on exactly this range of issues with us. So why don't we talk about the commercial space and, you know, and, and other things that develop during our conversations. I'll make sure that, um, that you get a regular invite to the, the, to the second Thursday call. Thank you. Of course. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you again, Dylan. No problem. Laura? We're at 201. <laughs> okay, I think we're okay. So just time check. I'm just going to share one little document with you guys as far as like our ongoing events for um, ongoing events that we usually support annually. Um, so it's going to um, be a slide deck that we'll present next week. So everyone that is an agency or a person that holds an event, um, I'm going to go to share screen really quick. Where are you, slide deck? Oh, there you are. Um, is that a, do you see that okay? Did yes. that show up? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So the next week when we meet, we'll just go through the slide deck really um, for everybody to see. Um, so for example, we have the OMICC Health Fair. That one's a little more complex. Um, so I'm going to go here. I'm not going to backpack giveaway. OMIFRC is a holder agency for this um, event. They usually get a thousand dollars. So what I'm asking the OMIFRC to do is go through and say when they're thinking to have this event, where and how, and then a little summary of the funding and spending plan. Um, we usually give them a thousand dollars. They may not need that this year. They may need more, less, um, but a summary that they'll be able to plug in. And and so next week when we come back, they'll be able to report on it. How we could have a discussion about what's feasible and what the OMICC is willing to continue to support. So it's a simple slide deck. It will help us have a better discussion next week. Um, here's winter toy drive, same thing. Um, when, where, how, what are we thinking as far as um, the amount of funds it will need to, to happen for the community? Um, same thing for turkey toy drive. Um, I have here an example for like flyers and these are just examples of how, what I'm thinking we could use to have a discussion next week. So flyers, $500. Again, that's just an example. Um, so that way we could have a consensus around what the OMICC is willing to support. Um, so we do have $2,400 as of today, $24,000 yeah, um, yeah, $24, for our community action grants um, that involves these events. Um, to kind of discuss and see how we want to spend this year. So $24,000, we're going to start the work with these events since these are events that we, we like to see in our community every year. Um, so that link is an edible link and I put it in the chat. So if you are a holder of a event, go ahead and go through here and work through the slide deck. And then next week when we come back, um, we could have a presentation and kind of brainstorm about what is possible and how the OMICC and the community could support these events. Um, question, comments, further ideas? I got nothing. Anybody? All right. So, well, I'll ask something since I seem to be the chatty one today. But um, do we know how much in total we have then? Because last I heard we had only 14,000. 
So are we still yeah. looking at that or did we get more allocated? We got an additional 41 from MOHCD. Um, so the number that comes to the OMICC from that number is an additional $10,000. So for a total of $24,000 to the OMI collaborative. Okay. Yes. And that is just from MOHCD. And that's something I'm hoping to have um, just a better financial slide for you guys next week um, around the amount that is in your discretionary funds. So I, we have some banner money that was never spent. Um, that was about $2,000. And then we have dollars from our MOU fees that comes from agencies. Um, so we do have that money. So if we wanna spend some of that money this upcoming year, we can. Um, so next week, along with this, um, presentations from our annual events, I have discussion over um, the rest of the MOHCD funds and your discretionary fund. Um, but right now that is, we have a total of $24,000 allocated to the collaborative. Um, I'm working with Monica to kind of get a better grasp of MOHCD's commitment in October and what, what the process will look like for October, for October when we go into the RFP. Um, or if there's an RFP, because I'm not I'm yet to have concrete answers from MOI City about, about our grant. Yeah, Laura, you had said that there was 40000 and that um, the OMICC gets 10000 Where Where's the other 30000 going? So another ten goes to the Excel. So the total was forty one. Um, and I have, let me see here. Uh-oh, I'm sorry, I didn't so, hear you. So 41, um, some of that goes to admin, some of that goes to my um, salary to support the collaborative in the back end. Um, okay. We have OMI um, getting 10 and Excelsior Collaborative getting 10. Okay. Um, yeah, and so I could share that spread and see, I mean, I'm very transparent. So I have no problem sharing the, the breakdown of every dollar. So I could do that next week as well. No, I was just wondering because I remember when we were on the resiliency team and we were going to um, split up money that was from Daniel. And when we, um, I, I had raised my concern about how I think Excelsior and, Cal and, and Cayuga, they're separate, but kind of together. The same is like we have Randolph and broad and there's like two separate issues there's seniors on one end youth on the other and that when we were going to be looking at the small communities that we look at the omi the same way how they look at the excelsior slash cayuga yeah we are, you know a lot of things we did for invest black was really down there on on the commercial corridor, but there's another commercial corridor that just doesn't have any commercial on the um, Randolph Street. So I just wanted to always make sure that we're looking, because in, in communities, there are a lot of different neighborhoods, even within communities that if we're breaking it up three ways, it should be looked at four ways too. Yeah. Yeah, um, and that's also money that um, Felicia mentioned it's still on the table, right? There's still some resiliency money and that's not tied with the mission line or collaborative that's coming through CYC. Yeah. Um, and so um, I think that's a whole nother spending track, but for Cayuga, I think the thought around giving Cayuga 10,000 is because they had their own resiliency project already going. Um, like they, they're their own kind of steering committee. They had their own steering committee. <laughs> I'm sorry. Sorry. So Excelsior had their own um, run through a small group and then Cayuga already had their own running. And then we, of course, had Broad, but Randolph in one through our OMICC collaborative. Um, so I, I don't know if they're going to spend it separately. I have to go back and ask questions for that resiliency team and see how they span us spending the, those $20,000, I believe, that they got. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, anything else? 
Thanks, Laura. You're welcome. So I will follow up with every agency individually, make sure they um, have any questions on the slides, but I'm hoping to keep it simple. Um, plug in your ideas and then we'll brainstorm this upcoming week. All right, very good. Um, Maurice, do you have anything to update us on before we head out? We head out to go somewhere, not in front of Zoom? I don't have anything at the moment. Oh, all right. Um, um, Larissa, do we have a clean team or a cleaning day this Saturday? Um, not this Saturday, it's next Saturday. But back in, in once we get to October, it'll move back to the first Saturday. And that's only because this weekend is Labor Day weekend. Oh, okay. All right. All right. Thank you so very much, everyone. Thank you for coming. Have a great weekend. Long. It's long weekend. Yeah, long weekend. It is. It, it is. <laughs> Eat barbecue, sit out, social distance, drink tequila. I just want some barbecue. Oh, that sounds good. I, I Yeah, you can. Oh, yeah. I was going to tease Alita. Her, her son was uh, scared because we said we were coming for the cinnamon rolls. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, lock the doors, lock the doors. <laughs> He's like, wait. <laughs> Oh, Dahlia, this is Helen. Can I? Oh, Helen, I'm so sorry. Come on, Helen. No problem. I'll make it quick. I just want to share a story. So, a family of four went to the pop up uh, testing site on the 28th. Okay. Test positive. Mm. So they were actually um, they were actually covered by Kaiser and CCHP, but like if there's no pop up, they might not get tested. So I just want. So um, since then, the whole family has been um, start quarantining. Okay. And I just want to thank you for like spreading the word and let people know about the pop up site, which is very very helpful. And you know, you know, some private um, providers they like like kind of like not letting people to get tested, making excuses. Um, oh. And then, so yeah, I mean, yeah, they will either say, um, oh, if you're not, if you're not like don't have symptoms, you may not need to get tested, or they might say, um. Uh, something like, oh, uh, it might be a, a false positive. So just wait a little bit and then instead of um, scheduling people right away. So I just want to say thank you. Those pop up testing sites are very, very, very important and hopefully there will be more in our area. Thank you. Mm. Yeah. Very, very good. That's good. They're all needed. Now yes. we need to get on the flu shot, the flu shot train and the census and the voting. We were at 180 this Friday, biggest what? day ever. Nice. Yeah. And that's with nothing, no, no text message campaign. That's great. Yeah, just shows the need. And I say the crew out there is very welcoming. It's a great gang. Yes. They need a special. Yes. <laughs> and all this is over. Yes. <laughs> right. Uh, I did buy really some yeah. hand, Mary, I bought some hand warmers. So, and I bought a new box so you guys can shake them up and get it warm because it was freezing <laughs> out there when I came. <laughs> oh, that's that came from you, huh? Yeah, I have another one. <laughs> well, I think these next two Fridays are going to be pre pretty reasonable. It's supposed okay, to get good. warmer again. Hmm. Our biggest day ever, it, it was smoky and it was cold. So, yes. you know. Well, and now I've I've gotten the nod. I'm gonna just let people come and use the building as need be the, on these days. I finally convinced him to just, I got this. Leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I think I came in at, I think we we're at 176, and um, EJ was like, "Go get tested," and I was just like, "Well, I think I I, I don't think I wanted to do it today." <laughs> But, I, <laughs> I was like, I haven't made a decision yet. But he was like, go get it. <laughs> I was like, all right. It's so, been kind of cool for our, you know, for those of us who've been working and delivering and, and you know, even though we're prep wearing masks, to, to have that availability to get tested every Friday. Right. It, it has been great. And, and to get the, re the results even before the weekend. Ends. Oh, yeah. No, yeah. it's good. 
It's very good. Rob, well done. Big kudos to the, the gang out there. And we got to do something nice for them. Yes. Yes. Yes, we do. Yeah, the result came out very quickly, like in one day or two. So that was really quick. Oh, yeah. very good. All right. Thank you, everybody. We're going to leave. Enjoy your weekend, everybody. Yes. Thank you. Now I know it's a, a long one. Okay, thank you. Yeah, right. <laughs> you're going to take, you said you're taking off Monday and Tuesday. Oh. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, everybody. Okay, bye. 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 <laughs>